Now let's jump back over to Xcode and we can add the Worklight API to our existing Xcode project. In the project navigator, I've already created a Worklight folder. So we can just right click on that folder and select add files to our Hacker News project. And inside my server, which is the server we just created, there's an apps directory and we see my native API, which is our native API instance, which we've just created. And we need to select worklight.plist and worklight.api. Under destination, make sure to check copy items if needed, and also make sure to check create groups for any added folders. And we'll select add, and you can see that the worklight.plist and worklight API have been added to our project. Next, you would normally add a linker flag and some framework libraries, which I've already configured for this sample, just to save a little bit of time. And after you've added those libraries, then we can go ahead and start integrating into the application. So within my app delegate, so right when the application starts, I want to make a connection to the Worklight server. In order to do that, we first need to implement the WL delegate protocol. So we'll do pound import WL delegate.h. And in our header file, we will implement the WL delegate protocol. Now in our implementation class, we can come in here and we can add the WL delegate methods. The WL delegate protocol has two methods, on success and, and on failure. These two methods would be invoked when either you successfully click connect to the Worklight server or if there's a failure connecting to the Worklight server. The next thing we need to do is actually grab an instance of the WL client. Oops, I forgot to add our header. We'll add a reference to our Worklight client header and we'll grab a reference to the Worklight client singleton instance and we will connect using the WL connect with delegate method. And the delegate is this class that we're currently editing since we've implemented the WL delegate protocol. So we will connect with delegate self. And just by adding these few lines of code, we now have a live connection to the Worklight server. So when we launch this application, Xcode's compiling, we'll launch it on the simulator. And from the command line, let's, let's launch our Worklight console again. And you can see here, we have got our native API. If we go under devices, we can now see that we have um, an active connection fr from the iPhone simulator. We can see the device version, we can see the device ID. And this kind of information will be collected for every app that's used to communicate with the, with the Worklight server. So you'd be able to see you know, how many apps has it been deployed to, what's the predominant operating system version, um, what's the status of these applications, is it active, inactive? We can also jump to the analytics dashboard. And on the analytics dashboard, we can see operational analytics. So we can see how many active sessions are they? Are they device sessions, meaning in an application? Are they web sessions? We can see, um, in this case, you know, it's really limited because I've only connected with one simulator, but you'd be able to see how many hits is the API getting? Um, you know, what's the environment? So if you have multiple environments, iOS, Android, you can see which you can see what's the distribution of platforms that are calling into this service. Um, as I mentioned, we can see the total number of sessions, the device sessions, the number of web sessions. We can see a breakdown of devices uh, for each one of those. You can see you know, what's the environment, what's the model, what's the operating system version. We can go into our network summary and we can see all of the requests that are being made into this API. So, Right now, we've only got our init function, which is basically being called when we connect to the application. But the more data services that we expose through Worklight, we're going to immediately be able to capture information for all of those services.